Hello. We're going to pick up in Chapter 3, where we left off in class, and um, I'm going to go through the example, example number 3, that we were talking about just before we left. This example is also in your book. This is on um, page 66 and 67. Get my pen out here. That's no good. Okay. So if you want to follow along in your book or get more information, look there. Okay, so we had this um, plane that's flying along at 115 meters per second horizontally. So there's no up or down component to its velocity. So it drops a care package. After the care package drops, we talked about how the x component of the velocity stays the same because there's now nothing pushing or pulling it in that direction. Um, of course, this is neglecting air resistance. If there was air resistance, this would get a little bit smaller. So we're going to ignore that to make the problem easier. Okay, so we know two pieces of information here. We know that the initial velocity of the plane is 115 meters per second. So what quantity is that? That's V naught. And now that we're working in two dimensions, we have to add a subscript. So that's V naught x. That's the x direction initial velocity. We also know the altitude of the plane. So that's the height. So that's the initial position, and since this is the vertical position, we're going to call that y naught. Okay, so those are the two pieces of information that are given. I'm going to move on to the next, to a blank page, so we have more room to work. So we're going to list all of our given information in x components, oops, c o m p, and y components. Okay, so we already said that we know the initial velocity in the x direction is 115 meters per second. Okay, we talked about in class, since there's no accelerate, or so, since there's nothing pushing or pulling it to the left or right, our acceleration in the x direction is also zero. Since the acceleration is zero, what does that actually mean about the velocity? Acceleration is the change in velocity over time. If that is zero. That means there's no change in velocity as time goes on. So we also know that the final velocity in the x direction is 115. Oops. Okay, we don't know how much time that was not given. That's something we would have to figure out. And uh, we could say that the initial x position is zero, but we don't know the final x position. So the question is asking us to determine the time required. So do we have enough information in the x direction to figure out how much time it's going to take? So we would need an equation that includes t but doesn't include x because we don't know that. We do have an equation like that. That would be this one. That would be v equals v naught plus a times t. Okay. Simple enough. So if we plug in our known values, we see that there's a problem. This would be 115, 115 plus 0 times t. So what happens to this term? This cancels out, and we get 115 equals 115, something that we already knew. So this is not going to be helpful for us. We're going to have to go to the y components and use those to solve this problem instead. So this method doesn't work. So let's look at the y components. So we already said that the initial y position was the altitude, 1,005 meters. Sorry, 1,050 meters. And then it's going to hit the ground, so the final position then we could say is zero. So it starts out at a height of 1,050, ends up down at zero. We also know the initial velocity in the y direction. Since the plane was only moving horizontally when the package was dropped, then there was no initial vertical velocity. We also know a y. 
that's going to be the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, down because it's downward. And then we don't know Vy, but maybe we don't need it. And we don't know T, that's what we're looking for. So now we know everything except these two. So can we find an equation that has T that doesn't have Vy? Sure, it's this one. Okay, and then since we're talking about the vertical direction, we're going to replace the x's with y's instead for position. So this will be y and y naught. And then remembering to put a subscript of y on everything except for t, because that's the same for both. Okay, so plugging in our numbers, y0, y naught was 1050, v naught y is 0, so that means this is going to cancel out this whole term and then Ay was negative 9.8. So from here you can solve for t, and you should get t equals 14.6 seconds. All right, so if you have a problem like this where you have something that's projected or dropped, you're always, almost always, going to need to use the y components to find time. So in most cases, the information that's given to you in the problem is such that you will need to use the Y components. All right, a couple more examples. So, so conceptual example, thinking. Let's say you're driving along in a fast car, and um, you would never actually do this because this would be incredibly dangerous, but you shoot a gun into the air. So the rifle is pointed straight up, vertically, and you fire it. That was a horribly drawn line. So you fire it while you're also moving this way. If there's no air resistance, where's the bullet going to land? Behind you, ahead of you, or in the barrel of the rifle? So think about this for a minute and pause if you need to. Okay, the answer is that it would land in the barrel of the rifle. Alright, so that's because this horizontal component of velocity doesn't change. So as long as you continue to go in your car at a constant velocity, then the bullet's velocity, this direction, is going to be the same as the car's velocity, this direction. The bullet is also going to be going up in the air at the same time, slowing down, slowing down, till it gets to the top. At the top, it's not moving up or down anymore, but it's still going this way, the same amount. Then coming back down, speeding up, speeding up. But the x component stays the same. So as long as your car maintains the same speed, the bullet will maintain the same speed, and it'll fall right back down in the rifle where it came out of. And this seems a little bit strange to us, and that's because this is not realistic. At these speeds, there's no way that air resistance is actually negligible. So the, the bullet would definitely not land back in the rifle. However, if you slow this down, you can demonstrate this. And I have a demonstration that I'm going to show you in class that is similar to this. We'll see that tomorrow. Okay, one more example. Let's say we throw a stone off the top of a cliff and it lands in the water below. So we're going to throw it two different ways, um, or two different stones, we'll say. One stone we're going to throw downward at an angle. The other stone we're going to throw upward at the same angle above the horizontal. So same initial speed or magnitude of velocity and same angle, but one's above, one's below the horizontal. So the question is, which one's going to strike the water with a greater velocity? So think about this, pause if you need to. The answer is that they both will strike the water with the same velocity. Okay, this is similar to the problem where we had um, one stone was thrown straight up in the air and the other one was thrown straight down with the same velocity. This is basically the same idea, except we have sideways velocity combined. If we looked at the components of this initial velocity, 
the upward one has an upward y component, vy, and a vx sideways component. The downward one has the same deal going on. Let me draw that different. We have a vy and a vx. So notice the, VY, the vx's are exactly the same and the vy's are the same except opposite directions. So this stone is going to go up, up, slow down, slow down, slow down. Here the y velocity is going to be zero, the x is still going to be the same. When it gets back to this point, because of symmetry, its y velocity is going to be the same as it was to begin with, except pointed in the opposite direction. That's the same as this one had to begin with. So at this point, these two situations from the dotted line down are identical in the vertical direction. So the x component's not changing. Now we have identical y components, so now we're going to, the velocity is going to be the, exactly the same um, in each case when it hits the ground. So we're still going to be speeding up with our y so that that's going to be bigger when it hits the ground, but it's going to be the same for both stones. Like that. Okay, what is going to be different is the time. This one's going to take more time to hit the ground because it has to go up here first, then back down. But the velocity will be the same. Alright, we'll stop here and I'll continue in the next video.